everyone. Welcome to yet another amazing class with us by Juice. I'm Aishwarya and in today's video, we are going to be discussing a very important subtopic that is muscular tissue from the chapter tissues. And by the end of today's video, I am sure all of you would have mastered this particular subtopic. Now, of course, if this is the first time that you are visiting our channel and this is the first video that you are watching, I would like to welcome all of you. And your 9th to 10th grade channel is your one-stop solution for all your academic related and exam related sessions. And let me just take one minute of your time to quickly tell you about some of the interesting things that we have in store for you. First and foremost, I would like to introduce all of you to Anthe. Now, Anthe is the Akash National Talent Hunt exam, which is a gateway to success for all you 7th to 12th graders. And of course, this will be your first taste into giving competitive exams where you will be competing among students all over the country. And of course, there are a lot of things which are there up for grabs. Of course, you stand a chance to win 100% scholarship, cash rewards, and of course, some few lucky students would get a chance to visit NASA and it would be an all expense paid trip. And the best part about this is that the enrollment and the registration for this exam is absolutely free. And of course, this exam is scheduled to happen in November. Now, currently in the 9th to 10th grade uh, class, we see that we have the mission midterms going on, which is a 45 day plan for all of you to ace your midterms. And as a part of this series, we have one shot marathons, we have chapter revision, notes PDF, exam focused questions, doubt solving sessions, strategy sessions, and so much more. So this right here is the very reason that you need to stay subscribed to our channel. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because we have always got you covered. And of course, the Baiju's mini learning program is now back and we have a new code for all of you that is the YT first code. And here you see the first thousand users every week can avail it for free. And the mini learning program does offer a lot of interesting features where you have the two teacher advantage, live doubt solving classes that would be there. And of course, a lot of post class assessments. So again, the link is available in the description box. Do check it out. Now I do know that I've taken a little more than one minute, but of course, without wasting any more time, we'll get started with the class on muscular tissue. And here's a quick topic list of what all we will be covering in this video. So we will be learning about what are muscular tissues. Then we will move on to learning about the types of muscular tissue, which includes your striated, unstriated and cardiac muscles. Now, when we talk about tissues, we know that tissues are nothing but a group of cells that are similar in structure and that perform a common function. And broadly, they can be categorized into plant tissues and animal tissues. Now, when we talk about animal tissues, we know that there are four types, which includes your epithelial tissue, your muscular tissue, connective tissues, and nervous tissues. Now, in the human body, we know that all these tissues come together to form organs, different organs come to form organ systems, and all these organ systems will finally form an organism. And this is part of your different levels of organization. But what we see on the outside is pretty much different parts of our body like hands, legs, face, right? And of course, we see the outermost covering that is there, which is the skin. But what actually provides the framework for our body are the bones that are there, right? So we know that bones are a kind of connective tissue that is there. And we see that all these bones come together and form the skeletal system. Now we see that the skeletal system of our body has various important roles, right? It provides framework to our body, right? And of course, it provides protection. Now, somewhere along the line, I'm sure you must be thinking, Ma'am, we came here for muscular tissue, but you are talking to us about skeletal tissue and skeletal system that is there. So why are we learning about it? Let me tell you. You see, the skeletal system also has another function. That is to help with movement and locomotion, right? So we see that movement and locomotion is something that is help that we do with the help of our skeletal system or our bones. But bones alone will not suffice. Because imagine if we had only bones in our body and maybe no muscles, you would see that we would have robotic rigid movements. But thankfully, because of the muscles that are there in our body, we are able to achieve flexible movement that is there. And all these muscles come together to form the muscular system of our body. And at the end of the day, we know that the muscular system is made up of muscular tissue. So what are muscular tissue? 
it can be simply defined as a group of cells which are made up of muscle cells. And we see that these muscle cells are capable of contraction and relaxation. Now you see muscle cells that are there in our body are elongated or they are long, right? And we call this also as fiber-like. So let me make an important note here and you can write this down as well. So we often refer to elongated cells as fibers, which is why sometimes we also refer this as muscle fibers that are there. And these muscle fibers have certain proteins inside them, which we call as contractile proteins. So let me quickly write this down. We have contractile proteins. And these proteins have the ability to contract or squeeze together and relax. Which is why we say that the muscle cells are capable of contraction and relaxation. And thereby it helps our body in movement and locomotion. So movement is when we change the position like how I'm moving my hand. Locomotion is when we go from one place to the other. Now of course when we talk about movement, right? We know that there are some movements that we can control. For example, the way I'm moving my hand. But there are some movements in my body that I cannot control. For example, after I swallow my food, I will not be able to control the movement of food that goes down the digestive system. Which is why movement in our body can be of two types. They can be voluntary, right? So they can be voluntary or they can be involuntary. Yes, so let me quickly just write this down once again. Now, voluntary movements are those movements which can be controlled by us consciously, while involuntary movements are those movements which cannot be controlled by us consciously. And with this simple understanding about the different types of movement, we'll quickly go into understanding about the different types of muscular tissue that we find in our body. So we have striated muscular tissue, unstriated and cardiac muscular tissue. So first up, let us discuss about striated muscles. Now, when we talk about striated muscles, we see that these are the muscles which are most often found attached to the skeleton, right? So we see that they are mostly found in the arms, in the legs, and in the face, which is why another name for this is skeletal muscles. So we also call this as skeletal muscles. Now we see that these skeletal muscles that are there, right? Whether the ones that we find in our arms, legs or face. These are the movements which we can control. We can control the movement of our arms. We can control the movement in our legs. So we know that this is voluntary control. Which is why we also call it as voluntary muscles. But why do we say that they are striated? What, what is the reason behind it? For that, we need to understand the structure of this muscle. Now when we look at its structure, we see that they are made up of long elongated, right? So we see that they are long and cylindrical and we see that they are unbranched, which means that there will be many such cells, but they will not be branched. They will just be long and, you know, elongated as you see here. And the interesting part here is that there are various striations or stripes which are present on them. And we see that these stripes have alternating dark and light bands. Please make a note of it. There are alternating dark and light bands which are present across, which we call as stripes or striations. Hence the name striated muscles. Yes, and we also see that they are multinucleated, which means that there will be many nuclei, right? So when we say multinucleated, that means that there are many nuclei which are present. And we see that these muscles are primarily responsible for voluntary movement. And we see that they're responsible for locomotion. And we also find these muscles in our tongue, which is why we are able to speak, right? We speak when we want to speak. That means that it's the movement that we can control. And we see that these muscles form about 40 to 50 percent of our body mass, right? So we see that they make up a large portion of our body. So this was all about striated muscles. And when you're learning about muscles, you can always divide it into three parts. Where we find it, what is its structure, and its function. So here's a very quick question for all of you. And in the meanwhile, you can let me know the answer. That is, which among the following is not a characteristic of skeletal muscles? Long, cylindrical, unbranched, or involuntary? Now we know that skeletal muscles are elongated, right? Which means that they are long. 
and we know that they are cylindrical and unbranched and they are multinucleated and we see that they are voluntary as well. So involuntary here is not a characteristic of skeletal muscles. So with this, we've had a quick recap of what are skeletal muscles or the striated muscles. Now we will quickly move on to unstriated muscles. Now we see that unstriated muscles are also known as unstriped muscles or smooth muscles. And we see that these are the muscles which we find that makes up the visceral organs, right, or the walls of the organs. So we see that we find them in the walls of hollow and tubular organs. So let me quickly make a list of this as well. So we find them in the elementary canal, right? So the esophagus, the stomach, the intestines, it will include all of it. We find them in the urinary bladder. Yes, and we will also find it in the walls of the blood vessels as well. And if you see, we know that because they make up the tubular organs that are there, we call them as visceral organs, which is why we also call them as visceral muscles. Now we see that these muscles are the movement or the movement in these parts are something that we cannot control, which is why we call them as involuntary muscles, right? And of course, we call them as smooth or unstriped. Now what is the reason behind calling it as smooth muscles or unstriped muscles or unstriated muscles? It is very simple. Again, we go back to understanding the structure. Now, unlike skeletal muscles, which are made up of cylindrical cells, we see that these are made up of spindle-shaped cells. Now, what do we mean by the term spindle? It means that they are narrow in the ends and they are broad in the center. That is what we mean by the term spindle. And we see that they have pointed ends. And we see in this case, there are no dark and light bands. There are no stripes which are present which is why we say that they are unstriated or unstriped or smooth muscles. And we see that they are uninucleate, which means that they only have a single nucleus per cell. Hence, that is also an important characteristic. And since we know that they make up the elementary canal, the walls of the blood vessels, we know that its movement cannot be controlled. So they are responsible for a lot of involuntary movement that takes place. For example, the peristaltic contraction and relaxations that we see in the elementary canal. Now, we know that peristalsis is this, you know, wave-shaped movement or the wave-like movement that we observe throughout the elementary canal, right? And this is brought about by the smooth muscles. And we also see that at the openings and closings of the certain parts of our body, such as uh, the sphincters which are found in the stomach or sphincters that we find in the urinary bladder, right? So here we see that for all these sphincters also, we see that these muscles are present and they regulate the movement. So this was all about the smooth muscles. Now let's have a quick question to recap smooth muscles. So which among the following is not made up of smooth muscles? Urinary bladder, small intestine, arms or stomach. Now we know that smooth muscles are made up of spindle shaped cells that are uninucleate, right? And we know that there are no striations present. And they make up the walls of the blood vessels and they are found in the walls of hollow and tubular organs, such as the urinary bladder, small intestine and stomach. But when we talk about arms, we know that the skeletal muscles are present in the arms, right? And they are striated muscles. So with this, we've had a look at both striated and unstriated muscles. And it's important that you understand the difference between the two because on an exam front, this difference between the two is something that they would commonly ask. So it's always good to make a note of this. Now let's move on to the last type of muscle that is cardiac muscle. Now cardiac muscle is a very special kind of muscle that we find in our body and it makes up the heart, right? So we find it in the walls of the heart which is why we also call them as heart muscles, right? Now, when we talk about heart as an organ, we know that heart is something which is constantly beating, right? Or we say that it is constantly pumping the blood, yes? Now, the reason why it is able to do so is because of the cardiac muscles. And in order to understand this, we must have an understanding about its structure. Now, cardiac muscle is slightly different from your smooth muscles, right? Because you may think that because, you know, the movement of the heart is something that we cannot control, it should be made up of smooth muscles. But as a matter of fact, it has a slightly different variation. Because here, if you see, they are made up of short cylindrical cells, right? So we see that they are cylindrical. But in this case, we see that they are branched. 
So when we say cylindrical, we relate to skeletal muscles. But here, we know skeletal muscles are unbranched. But in this case, we see that they are branched and they are short. And we see that because they are branched, they form an interconnected network. And we find certain structures that are present, which we call as intercalated discs, right? So we find them which are sit situated at different parts. So we find intercalated discs all throughout. Now, why do we have these intercalated discs? Now, intercalated discs hold all these cells together. So we know that they are branched and they're forming a network. But to hold them all in place, we see that these intercalated discs are there. And we see that for the coordinated rhythmic movement, I'm writing this down because it's extremely important. For the coordinated rhythmic movement, these intercalated discs play a very important role. And apart from this, we also see that they are uninucleated, right? So apart from the fact that they are branched, they are also uninucleated. And we see that these muscles are responsible for the continuous cardiac contraction and relaxation or the rhythmic contraction and relaxation that we observe in the heart. And we know that this is what is responsible for pumping the blood to different parts of the body. So with this, if you see, we have concluded our understanding about muscular tissue. Now we see that the skeletal muscles or the striated muscles here are responsible for voluntary movement, while both smooth muscles and cardiac muscles are responsible for involuntary movement. And most often, a very common question that may come is a primary difference between the three, right? So we can quickly recall the, all the three topics by listing them down. So when we talk about striated muscles, we know that they are made up of cylindrical. The cells are cylindrical. They are unbranched. And we know that they are multinucleated. And we see that they are mainly located in the arms, in the legs, and of course in the face region or in the neck region. Now we see that their primary role or the primary function is of course to regulate voluntary movement in our body. Yes? While on the other hand, when we talk about unstriated muscles, they are made up of spindle-shaped cells. We see that they are uninucleate. So they are uninucleated. And we see that there are no striations. Yes? So this point is something you can add in the previous, uh, when we talk about skeletal muscles, we can add the fact that striations are present. Right? So I'm, making, I'm writing it a little quickly, but you can make a neat tabular column. Now we know that this is, this is mainly found in the elementary canal, the urinary bladder that is there. And of course, you can write that it's found in the walls of the blood vessels. Yes? So we find them in all these regions. And of course, here we see that their main function is of course for involuntary movement in these parts. Right? And last but not the least, we have the cardiac muscles which are there. Now, talking about the cardiac muscles, we know that they are again cylindrical, right? But in this case, we see that they are branched, right? And we know that they are uninucleate as well, which means that they have only a single nucleus. And of course, we see that intercalated discs are present. Now, when we talk about the location, of course, we see that they are found in the walls of the heart. Right? And we see that their primary function is the rhythmic. I would always stress on the fact that you say rhythmic. So the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart. Right? So that is the role of the cardiac muscles. So with this, if you see, I'm sure now with this simple tabular column, muscular tissue and its types would have become easy. Now, of course, to be part of our community and for more such videos, please make sure that you are joined and a part of our Telegram channel as well. Because, of course, in the Telegram channel, we give you the session PDFs and we have a lot more things for you in store. So do be a part of our Telegram community. And you know that the 9 to 10 channel has got you covered no matter what. So if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Hoping to see you very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.